What's up guys, Paul from the Sysadmin channel bringing you the best tips and tools for your Sysadmin journey. In this video, we're going to continue our PHP and PowerShell series for building a web application. So to give you a quick overview, we already wrote our PHP code to get the user's input. And if I enter that information here really quick, uh, we can see that it outputs hello PowerShell. All right, so what we're going to do today is we're going to write the new user creation function to take the input from that form to eventually store it in a database. That's actually going to be the topic of our next video. But for now, let's go ahead and set up the foundation, which means that we'll need to create a web tool folder under our PowerShell folder and then create a web tool. I'm sorry, a text document. And we'll go ahead and name that web tool dot PSM one and remove the dot text. So one important thing to note here is that the PSM one file must be in a folder with the same exact name. So in our case, our PowerShell folder is going to be our PS module path folder. And since our module is going to be called web tool, we'll need a folder and a PSM one file that's named web tool. Since we never discussed what the PS module path is, it's an environment variable that's used to tell PowerShell that we have modules in that location. This allows PowerShell to automatically load the module at the start of a session without needing to import it manually. It will also allow us to call functions from that module from any directory. So it's going to be very useful when it's accessed from our PHP form. So we can see here that I've already added a new directory. Um, we'll go ahead and select that PowerShell folder. And um, once that is set, we'll go ahead and click OK. OK here again. And now we have our PowerShell folder as a PS module path. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get a random password generator from our website. Um, so I went ahead and Googled uh, PowerShell random password generator, and uh, we're going to import that code into our newly created web tool module. And this will allow us to create a random password on the fly without having to store it um, or use a predefined password. So we'll go ahead and copy the contents of that script of that function. And then we'll just simply paste it into our web tool module. And then once we save that, we'll go ahead and collapse it to save on space. All right, next up, I wanted to bring up an article I wrote that I use for creating PowerShell functions. Uh, so we'll simply Google PowerShell template, the sysadmin channel. And this article not only covers the exact template I use when creating my scripts, but it also covers a lot of advanced functions, uh, concepts such as parameters, how to use built in logic, like validate range, validate set, uh, so on and so forth. So I invite you to take a look if you're interested. All right. So from here, we're going to click on that PowerShell template link, and then I'm going to copy the function, the template, and then we're going to paste that into our web tool module. So I'll go ahead and open that back up so we can build off of that. All right, so once that is pasted in, we'll go ahead and start with the function name. Um, so we'll go ahead and call this new user creation. And then right underneath that for our synopsis, we'll go ahead and put in the description of what this function is used for. Um, in our notes, we'll go ahead and change the name to new user creation as well. And we'll go ahead and remove the example and the link for now. Uh, we can go ahead and populate that stuff later. All right, first things first, we're going to set the mandatory to true because we want all parameters to be specified. We're going to remove the value from pipeline attributes because we do not want pipeline in this case. Um, we also want to validate that it's not null or empty. And then we'll change the first parameter name to first name. Um, since we are going to be adding multiple parameters to this script, we'll just go ahead and copy and paste uh, what we have here and uh, move on. So our next parameter is going to be our last name. Uh, we'll be able to use the first name and the last name to create a username from that. Uh, once that is set, we'll go ahead and do the same for employee ID. So we'll go ahead and make sure that that is changed. Manager email is the parameter that follows. And then once that is set, the last one is going to be the initiated, initiated by parameter name. All right, and since we copy and pasted this from our template, we're actually going to need to change the position values from zero to whatever the position is going to be. So I'm just going to increment that number into uh, until we're done with those parameters. I'm also going to change the parameter to not allow multiple input. So we'll need to change or remove the inside square bracket next to the string data type. 
Okay, so inside our begin block, we're going to grab the domain suffix for our email addresses. Um, every environment is different, but in my lab, my email address and my UPN are not the same as my fully qualified domain name. In this case, I'm going to query the UPN suffix to get the sysadminchannel.com since my active directory domain is ad.thesysadminchannel.com. So we'll need to write an if else statement to get the UPN suffix if it's configured. Otherwise, we'll just get the root domain name. All right, next up, we're going to use the get ad domain commandlet to query our primary domain controller so we can consistently use that without having to worry about replication times. Okay, moving on. Now we're going to want to set a default location for where these newly created objects are going to live. Um, I've set up a restricted OU called new hire. So I'm going to use the get ad organizational unit commandlet to get that exact path and use that as the default location. So now it's just a matter of pasting that value into the OU variable. Finally, the last item on the begin block is to set up the SQL connection so PowerShell can actually talk to our database. Uh, we've gone and created this hash table before, so let's move on to our process block. So anytime we're working or writing functions, we pretty much always want to check for errors. Uh, in PowerShell, we can achieve that by using a try catch block. Uh, what this does is test the code in the try block. And if there are any errors, um, it will then run the code in the catch block, essentially trying to catch the error. Uh, within our try block, we want to check if the data, specifically the employee ID, we're getting from our input value or our input form already exists. So this is assuming that the employee ID is a unique attribute in Active Directory and it's not used more than once. So we'll write a SQL statement to select everything from our web tool table where employee ID is the employee ID that was entered from the form. And after that, we're going to use the invoke SQL CMD commandlet to actually query the database using our check query variable that we stated above. We'll also close it off and set the error action to stop so it doesn't run any further code in the try block if there was an error that was found. Okay, next up, we'll want to check if there was a match with our query. So we'll specify if EID check is set to true, meaning if there was a value that was returned from our invoke SQL CMD command, then let's write a verbose message saying that the employee ID is matched with the email address that was returned from the EID check variable. And if there was not a value that was returned from our query, then we'll move on to our else block. So our else block is going to contain the logic for setting up the full name uh, using the first name and last name variables. It will also contain the logic for generating a dynamic username using the first initial of the first name and the full last, full last name. Uh, to do this, we're going to set a variable i to one and then we're going to set the username equals first name dot substring. For our first argument, we'll go ahead and give it zero since we want it to start at the beginning. And for our second argument, we're going to give it the variable I. So in this case, it's going to start from the beginning to the first letter. And then we're going to append the last name on top of that. Okay, at this point, we have a username that was generated from the first name and last name input. So we're going to write the logic to see if that's already in use in Active Directory. So we're going to check that by running a do loop until our condition is met. So I've opened up our do block and I'm going to keep that running until our taken variable is set to false. Inside our do block, I'm going to declare an ad user variable. And for that variable, I'm going to run a filter on get ad user to see if there is a SAM account name that matches our username. I'm also going to specify the server parameter to use our primary domain controller to make sure that we use the same domain controller every time. Okay, so if get ad user produced a result for the username, we're going to increment the i variable to plus one and we're going to run the code. We're going to rerun the code to generate a new username. Uh, this time it's going to use the first two letters of the first name as well as the last name. I'm also going to set the taken variable to true to make sure that we, we rerun the code starting from the top of the do block. If the get ad user commandlet did not produce a result, then that means that the username is free to use. 
So we'll set the taken variable to false to get ba basically get out of our do block. So we're pretty much cleared out of the AD portion, but now we want to make sure that the values are not set in our SQL database. Uh, so let's say your team gets an urgent, hey, so-and-so started 10 minutes ago, and I need his username and his email account created as soon as possible. In a perfect world, we would have gotten some advance notice, at least 24 hours notice, but sometimes, you know, it happens. So we want to make sure that multiple people are not entering the same information in the database. So we're basically going to do the same thing, but instead of filtering for get AD user, we're going to run another check query to see if that username exists in our database. So one thing to note here is that the username is going to continue the momentum that was set from the Active Directory check. So it's essentially making sure that the username is not in Active Directory and it's not in our SQL database. So it's making sure that it's clear from both sides. Finally, if the script does produce a valid username, we're going to want to output that via a PS custom object. Our custom object is going to contain the first name, the last name, the full name, the username, the email address, the employee ID, the manager email, and finally the initiated by properties. And this is all going to be going into our SQL database. Else, if the script does not produce a valid username, then we're going to want to stop the script from running further. And we're going to do that by running a error action parameter. And once we finally have that, we'll move on to our catch block. And here we're going to want to write a verbose message so we can output that to our PHP screen. And we're basically one going to want to write the exception message where it failed. All right, so at this point, we have pretty much everything already set up. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so we can see the script in its entirety. All right, next up, let's go ahead and open up PowerShell so we can test our new user creation script. Since we already have the module in our PS module path, there's no need to actually import the module so we can pretty much hit the ground running. I'm going to start off by calling the function new user creation. We're going to specify the first name of Buzz and the last name of Lightyear. We're going to give an employee ID of E850. Our manager email is going to be Gabby at the sysadminchannel.com. And finally, our initiated by is going to be me at the sysadminchannel.com. I'll go ahead and, ahead and hit enter here. And what do you know? We actually got our expected output. So that's looking really good so far. Uh, for my next step, I'm going to make a connection to our SQL database and basically output everything we currently have in there now. The reason for that is because we're going to get a little sneak peek of the PowerShell script that we're going to be developing in our next video. So here you can see that the only row I have in there now is the one we entered in manually when we initially created our database. Uh, now I'm going to up arrow and pipe that command into the save user creation to SQL database function that we're going to be building in our next video. And once I hit enter and rerun the query to dump everything from the database, we can see that our entry for Buzz Lightyear has now been entered into our database using PowerShell. And just for grins, I'm going to test our use case of a user either added in Active Directory or SQL database. So I'm going to remove the save user creation to SQL database function. And here we can see that it does write a verbose message saying employee ID 850 is matched with blightyear at thisisadminchannel.com. I'm also going to test using a different employee ID and we should be able to get a new output with bu lightyear at thisisadminchannel.com. So it looks like everything is working as expected. All right, guys, as mentioned earlier, our next video, we're going to write our save user creation to SQL database function. So make sure you stay tuned for that. So that about wraps it up for this video. This is Paul with the SysAdmin channel, signing out.